Well, hello, and welcome again to the 2012fad.com. I will be your host for this evening, and my name is Charlie Blue Hawk. Last night, we talked about addiction is selfishness, and how in the United States we used to be, uh, they were trying to convince us that uh, alcoholism was real. It was a disease, and that's why people drank to the point of uh, beyond stupidity, got in their cars and uh, murdered uh, people on their way home, and they couldn't be held responsible because it was a disease. They couldn't be held responsible because it was a disease. Well, I don't know from my experience, I'm 53 now, um, and I grew up with drunks. They're not alcoholics, they're drunks. And they drank because they chose to drink. There was no disease involved, it was a choice because they didn't want to be held responsible for their actions, because they wanted to do anything they wanted to do to us and not be held responsible for their actions. Same with drug addicts. I have yet to encounter a drug addict who uh, some disease forced them you know, to inject a needle into their arm or uh, caused them to take, um, what is it, crack cocaine, put some crack cocaine into a uh, a crinkled up uh, dish made out of aluminum foil and heat it and then breathe the fumes. That's a, that's a really specific illness that <laughs> actually has you go to the store and buy aluminum foil. So no, there's no such, a th no such thing as a alcoholic. There's no disease involved with drinking and drugs. None. It's selfishness. They want to do anything they want to do they don't want to be held responsible for their actions because from their point of view, they are important. You and I are not. And you and I have to look the other way when they abuse us or destroy us or destroy our lives simply because we're you know, trying to help them. No. They're not more important than you and I. And this is why I personally, whenever I run into drunks or uh, drug addicts, uh, now I just walk away because I know what the result will be. I've seen it too many times. AA is a wonderful thing, and uh, good on you if you give it a try. But um, no, it's a decision that you make. And it's your decision. Leave me out of this one. I've seen so many people destroy themselves with drugs and with uh, drinking. It's just amazing. I personally never knew, for example, that taking massive amounts of cocaine and heroin can actually physically alter your body, physically alter your appearance. I remember one woman, her eyeballs had turned from white to brown. And uh, this other girl who was this cute little thing, but she took so massive amounts of drugs. It so distorted her face that she looked like a evil goblin. And people would see us walking down the street together, and they literally would, their mouths would just hang open, their eyes would bug out of their head. They'd never seen this before. And I frankly didn't uh, hold, hold it against them, because I frankly couldn't believe it either, that drugs can actually distort your body to the point where you don't even look human anymore. And so tonight, I thought we might chat about right and wrong. Seems like a good topic. Right and wrong. Again, I have never met anyone, ever, who didn't know the difference between what was right and what was wrong. Didn't matter if they were, uh, how, how can I say this, psychological, psychologically disturbed people, psychos. It didn't matter if they were little children. It didn't matter if they were the elderly. It didn't matter if they were a Jew or a Muslim or a Christian or a Buddhist. It didn't matter. I've never met anybody who didn't know the difference between right and wrong. And you don't need religion to guide you through your life. You know. We all do. And it's something, again, that drugs and alcohol, you use in, as an excuse. Well, you know the difference between right and wrong, so you're going to do drugs, you're going to drink so much, you can actually say to people, and if they believe you, that I didn't know what was right and what was wrong. I was drunk. It's an illness. You can't hold it against me. I can. Because I know you're lying. 
Old man got drunk on a regular basis, took, got into his car, drove through a crowd of people in a place called Santa Monica, California, which is a suburb of Los Angeles in Southern California in the United States. He was drunk again, got into his car again, and this time he drove through a crowd of people. I think he killed 12 people that day. Don't know what happened to him. I was so disgusted by it, I just had to look the other way. I just couldn't stand it anymore. But uh, it looked like he was going to get off because he had an illness. No, he didn't. He knew the difference between right and wrong, and he covered it up with alcohol. In New Zealand, they know the difference between right and wrong, and I've, I've actually never seen violations of the human spirit and the human soul that I, that I, that I saw in New Zealand. And I grew up in Los Angeles. I thought I had seen absolutely everything. In Los Angeles, people know the difference between right and wrong, and they not only don't they care, well, I should say they really do care, because they want to do the wrong thing as often as possible. They want to do it to as many people as they can, and then they want the credit for it. You actually get points for doing the wrong thing in Hollywood and getting away with it and making even more money. In New Zealand, it was actually fear. It was actually fear that drove them, this fear, this gibbering, raving, lunatic madness that I saw. It was fear. They know the difference between right and wrong. For example, one of the, it doesn't matter where you're from in the world. It doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter. If you're a human being, there are certain laws that we all, as human beings, respect. And one of those oldest laws is the sanctity, the safety of a guest that you have invited into your home. When that person is in your home as your guest, you're responsible for them. And it doesn't matter if you're in a mud hut in Africa or a lean-to in Mexico City. It doesn't matter. In New Zealand, that doesn't exist. They can invite you and then spit on you and destroy you. And it doesn't matter to them. Which leads me, of course, to the, I don't think whoever owns New Zealand is actually human. Human beings live there, but basic human customs, such as the sanctity of the visitor in your home, are, don't exist. They know it's right, and they know what's wrong. In Hollywood, doing the wrong thing and surviving and getting credit for it is, makes you stronger. Our masters know the difference between right and wrong because they're very religious people, our masters. They really are. The trouble is, of course, they worship Satan. Whether Satan exists or not doesn't matter. They worship her. They believe she exists. And if you believe that Satan exists, it automatically sort of presupposes that you believe that God exists. So our masters are very religious people. They believe in God. In their case, it happens to be Satan. And they believe in her war against her lover, um, the real God, if you will. Ancient words, uh, ancient descriptions for these two deities were um, Jehovah, the devil, and Amalek, the true God. Now, it's nice these girls, you know, are lovers and are having a little tiff, and that's nice, but the problem is, of course, you and I are caught in the middle, which I think is wrong but that's just me. But our masters know very clearly the difference between right and wrong. Their servants, the Mandarin class, who I truly believe have souls, people like the Bush family, the Cheney family, the Clintons, Ben Bernanke, Obama, I believe that they're actually human beings. I actually believe they have souls. And I know for a fact they know the difference between right and wrong. They've chosen wrong. And I know that they have souls because whenever you hear Ben Bernanke or see him on TV talking, you can see he's terrified of us. He's absolutely terrified. It gets us back to old George Bush a few years ago. It was caught, um, it was a live mic, and he was chatting with some of his other uh, Mandarin class friends. And he was telling them laughingly that if the American people actually ever knew what the Bush family had done to them, 
that the American people would lynch them. So, yeah, they know the difference between right and wrong. Right now in London, we've had, uh, and it's uh, August 11th, 2011, we're having uh, our fourth or fifth day of rioting across the country, and it's not showing any signs of going down. Our masters are terrified because they believe that they had a, a Nazi state in place. They believe that they had the iron clamps down. And there's a very smart fellow by the name of Gerald Salente. Um, he does the Trends Research Journal. I highly recommend him. He has a saying that uh, when people lose, what is it? Uh, when people lose everything, they lose it. And this is what's happening in England now. The English people have been so abused for so long by the masters there. And of course, their masters are our masters. The United States is owned pretty much outright by the crown of England. But in the UK, they're standing up and they're rioting. The only way that they can get attention, it's the only way that their voice can be heard because they also know the difference between right and wrong. And they know that's what's been done to them. Unemployment, no education, no opportunities, losing their homes, living on the street for no other reason than, the, than, the, than that they are human beings. They know that's wrong. And the police yet again shot somebody a few days ago and that was just the straw that broke the camel's back. It was the last straw. And so now, so now, in England, people have been rioting for four or five days. I have no idea how that's going to turn out, but I do know that our masters are terrified. And I know their servants are terrified because their servants, the mandarins, are responsible for keeping order amongst the cattle, which is you and me. These people know the difference between right and wrong, and they have also chosen wrong. And they also know that their masters have no forgiveness. And they know that they're going to be sacrificed. It just depends on which of them is going to be sacrificed for this. And we can only hope that those left behind, after their masters slaughter them, that whoever comes up has some inkling of the difference between right and wrong, because we still outnumber our masters tens of millions to one. You and I know the difference between right and wrong. We've always known it. Me, I knew what was going on in the States was wrong, and I talked about it. And the very people I helped laughed at me, belittled me, degraded me. And then I told them what was going to happen. They didn't believe me. They laughed at me. Then it happened to them. And then they blamed me for what happened to them. <laughs> so I had to live the same nightmare several times. And uh, my only crime was that I thought that it was the right thing to do to help them, that it was the right thing to do to warn them. And in doing so, I spent most of my life alone. So I did what was right for me. I, I left the United States because I knew this was not going to get better. And I got to New Zealand where I was told, and the thing that, that uh, really sold me on New Zealand in their really expensive advertising campaign was the fact that New Zealanders, quote-unquote, were very highly educated and very experienced professional people were in charge of the country. Another unbelievable lie of so many, which is wrong, by the way. But I really wanted to be around highly educated people. I really did, after Los Angeles. And, uh, and I knew New York wasn't an option because um, I knew as many people on the west coast of the United States in the Seattle era, area knew that New York was going to be bombed pretty much back to the Stone Age and it was ten years later so I knew I couldn't live in New York so New York was the only other option for me in the United States and so I left the United States for this six year uh, advert the, the six years I was uh, invited to go to New Zealand because they needed high-end professionals they were a country of highly educated people. They were high, highly experienced people ran the country. Of course, all lies. And after three years of trying, because I believe, you know, I don't believe in giving up, but eventually I knew that nothing I was going to do was make was going to make a difference. So I fled New Zealand for Europe. And in each case, 
I encountered people who knew the difference between right and wrong. You could see it in their faces. You could see the glee in their eyes when they committed atrocities, little or large, and the joy it brought them. They enjoyed doing the wrong thing. They enjoyed it. They enjoyed destroying instead of building. They enjoyed destroying people instead of building relationships. It's a choice. It always is. It always gets down to the same thing. It's your decision. It's your choice, right or wrong. The problem with wrong is that in the hierarchy of the masters, there's always somebody above you. And they're going to do the wrong thing, too. And they're going to do it to you. Because in the hierarchy of evil, hatred, Satan worship, black magic, it's a pyramid. And there's only room at the top of that pyramid for a couple of people. And I guarantee you are not one of them. Which means when you do the wrong thing, you're going to end up with the rest of us, the people you've already wronged. There's no escape for you, not in this world or the next. If this is actually an educational program we're inside of, a virtual reality simulation of a world, guess what? You're going to fail the course. And you know what's going to happen then? you're going to have to take the course all over again, which means they're going to send you back here. My guess is they're going to send you back as one of us, as one of the cattle. Good luck with that. For the 2012fad.com, this is Charlie Bluehawk. The 2012 Fad is brought to you by Coffee and Blood, Love Letters Between the Dead, a series of five erotica horror novels about a fallen angel finding his way back to regain his own soul, and how the CIA war against the human race. Their black magic captures and traps him in the body of a mind-controlled slave designed to hunt down and to kill their god, their Satan.